When my kids were young, I really wanted to make Halloween fun for me too. And I've always liked temporary art, like sand castles and playing with Legos. And I thought, I'm gonna learn how to carve pumpkin really well. All right, so tip number one is get the right tools. Um, so if you're only cutting with a standard knife or um, a spoon, uh, invest in just a couple cheap tools. We, my mother-in-law got us this kit from William Sonoma, we think 20 years ago, and it has lasted great. The key things you wanna have is a nice scraper, which is really great, and a fine uh, knife, a little saw. It doesn't have to be that much. Now, many years of doing this, these little bitty ones, what happens with these is they really start to cramp your hands after a while because you're holding it in tight like that. Just this year, I saw one with a nice big handle and whoa, it's so much nicer. So um, I, I highly recommend looking around for something like that that's got a decent handle on it versus something that's got that smaller handle with it. Tip number two is when you go to cut it, um, cut the back out as well as the top. That allows you to get your hand down in there and clean it out really well and just makes it easier to do anything inside the pumpkin where you limit it to the top, which is something a lot of people do. You, you, your hand just can't fit in there quite as well. I like to cut it all in one big piece so it comes out as opposed to two separate pieces. And so just dig on in, get a nice flat edge across there. This a big thick boy. The other beauty part about cutting the back part of it is you don't have to cut as big of a hole in the top. This is a lovely pumpkin. Go ahead and grab one of our scrapers and start scraping away in there. Tip number three is to get that front wall nice and thin. So once you got all the guts out of it, you wanna really work on just carving as much off that front wall as possible. Get it down to like three quarters of an inch is kind of ideal, that makes for some nice carving. I'm sure you can get the front wall too thin, but I never have. Tip number four is to use a stencil. Um, and they're very easy to find online. I like zombiepumpkins.com. Um, it is uh, each season you pay for how many downloads you wanna do, but it's five or 10 bucks. Well worth it to be able to get some really cool stencils. So for this, I'm gonna do a unicorn. And I like just poking through the stencil to be able to lay out where I'm gonna put it on the piece. Now you can see it's a, it's a flat piece of paper that you're trying to put on a round pumpkin. First off, just kind of make it a little closer to the actual size. And then if you have trouble with it not, or bunching up a little bit, just cut a little slit in some of the areas where that can make a difference and then it'll flow out pretty nicely. Actually, this one fits quite well but you could cut a few more slits in there that allow you just to have a little bit of overlap so you can round it out some. Put that horn up nice and high. Then with whatever toolkit you'll get, you'll get these little pokey things and they come in two varieties. One is just poke, poke, poke. The other has got a little rounded element on it. And what you're going to do with these is just trace the parts that you're going to cut out. And so when you've got a straight line across like that, you can use your when to roll it, I'm gonna go back with a marker afterwards and mark this out. So you don't need to do every line across the way, particularly when it's a straight line up, you can just go ahead and mark it that way.
I do have to say, poking it is the least fun of the activities. So then you can see when you've got all the dots on there, you're like, I, I, there's just a lot of dots. How do I know exactly what that is? This is where I typically take a marker and then just kind of use my stencil as a guide to be able to mark everything out. So you can kind of see that here up there. And this is tip number five. Uh, this is a pretty standard tip, is you want to start small and delicate. So start in the center and work your way out. If you've carved big chunks and then you get in the center and you're trying to get something carved out, you're moving all those very fragile pieces. But if you start on the outside, then your structure keeps well to... If you start on the inside and work out, then your structure of the pumpkin helps hold those other places in, in line. Come back and then... I got that wall really thin. Even when I was poking, I was like, boy, this feels thinner than what I did. And uh, I think part of it was my braggadocious about, uh, I don't know that you can get it too thin. Certainly the thinner you get it, the faster it will deteriorate on the backside. And this probably goes without saying, but uh, always err on the side of being conservative. You can always take more pumpkin off, but uh, it's really tough to put any pumpkin back on. Although I have done that in the past. My uh, Grandfather was had known to take a Christmas tree and uh, when he didn't like the way it was shaped, cut a branch off of it, drill a hole in the trunk and then move the branch to another side. Um, I have taken that approach with pumpkins um, in that uh, if I cut something off that was too much or I lost a little section, taking a toothpick and put it back in and kind of make it happen. Oh, see? I broke it. You can get the pumpkin all too thin. Now just kind of cleaning up some of those edges in there. I want to get a light in it, see how it looks. I'm pretty pleased with the way that's turned out. So tip number six is just let the light do the work. So sometimes when you're cutting it and you take a look at some of the finer details, like the points here and this little curly cue here, you're like, well, it doesn't really look like that. But it's amazing how the light transfers through it once you, you get it in there. This thick outer shell of a skin, once that's cut and you've got a nice thin wall, usually the light will transfer for it and make some nice fine details for you. I thought I had used a Sharpie marker on these in the past, but now that I'm noticing how the black marker is not coming off on this, I'm thinking maybe I used like a dry erase marker or something. I'm not that concerned about it because in the dark those lines won't show, but just kind of sitting around I'm not sure I'm a fan of that. So one last tip there that I learned. And that's how many of these tips came up is from mistakes I've made in the past and have adjusted from it. That's what I've learned from several years of making mistakes and messing up a lot of pumpkins and trying some new things. I'd love to hear what tips you have. Please leave those in the comments down below and I'd love to hear what creative designs you've seen or what you're planning to do this year. Thanks and happy carving.